Jake here for Extreme Terrain, and in this video, we're taking a close look at the AFE Scorcher GT Power Module, fitting 3.6 liter powered 2020 and newer JT Gladiators, as well as 2012 and newer JK and JL Wranglers. The Scorcher GT Power Module is a great way for Jeep owners to increase the power output of the 3.6 liter Pentastar engine in their rigs. It features a really simple installation, easy operation, and an affordable price to boot. First things first, let's talk numbers. Now we tested this on our 2020 Gladiator Sport behind me on the dyno, and we ran it in fourth gear so we could rev it all the way out and not hit the dyno speed limiter. In stock form, our JT laid down 231 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and 212 pound-feet of torque at 3,800 RPM. After installing the Scorcher GT, we saw 238 horsepower at 6,300 RPM and 223 pound-feet of torque at 2,700 RPM, giving us peak gains of 7 horsepower and 11 pound-feet of torque, which considering we're measuring power and torque at the wheels and we're not doing this in the ideal one-to-one -one gear ratio, pretty solid result. Under the curb gains were also impressive, showing up to about 23 horsepower and 20 pound-feet of torque down low, but also specifically in the mid-range. Now, if you take a look at the graph here, you can see that we saw gains pretty much everywhere, and even though things leveled off around that 3,500 RPM mark, it picked back up right after that. So for a plug-and-play module, that's got some pretty solid overall gains. Now, unlike a traditional tuner module that alters your ECU and multiple different engine parameters, the Scorcher GT takes a more simplified and straightforward approach by altering just a few things. So this plugs into two places under the hood, both the manifold air pressure sensor and the intake air temperature sensor, and it can alter the parameters of each to have the engine push in more fuel for better combustion and more power. Since this is only altering those two things, you get some benefits here as well. First of all, this is a total plug and play installation. This is pretty much the extent of it and everything mounts discreetly under the hood. So at a glance, the only thing that's gonna give it away is the AFE logo here. Second thing is that because it's only altering signals and not the ECU itself, it's not gonna throw engine codes or leave any trace on the ECU should you need to remove it. Now this also has a convenient button on the side of the case that allows you to easily toggle this on and off with a little blue LED light indicating that it's in the on position. Now you can make that change while the Jeep is running or just turn it on. You don't have to disconnect it and do all kinds of stuff. You can just push the button, turn it on and off if you want the power. So this also makes a great complement to other breather mods and it is compatible with your stock intake as well, which you'll see when we go to install it on our truck. Now this may not be the most exciting thing to discuss when it comes to construction, but it's worth talking about here because AFE clearly took some time to make sure this was high quality. The case is made from an extruded aluminum with a black powder coating over top. And again, you've got the nice AFE logo here and everything is sealed up to protect the electronics inside. Now all this wiring here, and it is quite a bit of it, is done with factory style connectors already installed and it's covered and taped up so it's all gonna be neat and you don't have to do any wiring. It's ready to be plugged in right out of the box making for a very easy installation. But we'll come back and talk more about that momentarily. Pricing comes in at about $425, and that makes it pretty inexpensive in the pantheon of tuners and tuner modules. Now this one, of course, doesn't give you the ability to adjust things or the opportunity to change up a whole lot of stuff. But if you want to extract more power out of your engine without having to go a whole hog on a tuner, swap out your PCM or any of that, this is gonna be a great choice for you. Installation is going to get a 1 out of 3 on our difficulty meter and should only take you about 20 minutes to complete the job. Now like I mentioned earlier, this installation couldn't really be more simple. One side plugs into the map sensor, the other side into the IAT sensor, and all that wiring is done for you, making it super easy. It even has some Velcro on the back of it right out of the box. So with that, let's hop on over to the Jeep and we'll show you how to get it done. Tools used in this installation are a ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket. All right, everyone, now it is time to install the AFE Scorcher GT on our 2020 Jeep Gladiator here. Now, there's a couple things we want to do first before we get this started. AFE says that they want you to put the truck into sleep mode before you do this. Now, what you can do for that is shut the doors with the hood open already, press lock on the key fob, and let it sit for 20 minutes if the truck is warm. That was what we did here because we've done our stock dyno runs already. The other thing you can do if the truck is warm and you just want to get to it, you can disconnect the negative battery terminal, which is something that we're going to do. So I'm going to start with that, then we'll go to the other side of the engine bay and get this thing plugged in and installed. So I'm going to start by disconnecting our negative battery terminal here using my 10 millimeter socket on a wrench. Let's get this 
comes loose. Carefully pull it off. And we'll wrap this up so it doesn't ground out and we'll set it aside. Now that we have our battery disconnected, we can go ahead and get the Scorcher GT plugged in. Now there are two different sets of cables connected on here. The shorter of the two, the ones that look like this, are gonna go to your manifold absolute pressure sensor right here on the back of the engine. The other one that is the longer of the two is gonna go to your intake air temperature sensor up here on the front of your intake. So make sure you've identified which one is which. We're gonna start with the MAP sensor in the back, so we'll set that one aside. We're gonna go in right here again to the manifold absolute pressure sensor. All right, starting off, we gotta disconnect our stock sensor first. There is a locking clip on this, so you're just gonna be able to pull that back. And once you do, you can just push down on it and wiggle the connector right out. Now that our plug is out, we're gonna clip this in to the female end of the connector here. You'll see some writing on this side of it. This is gonna go up. This will only plug in one way. So this will go in on the side where you see the locking clip. So we'll just push that in until it clicks, push the locking tab back in, check the connection, make sure it's solid. Then we can set that aside. We're gonna take the other end and plug that back into the sensor on the engine block. Then we'll take this side, and that is gonna plug it back into the sensor itself on the engine. So push that until it clicks, and then you've got a gray locking tab on here. And just push until it's locked. Just check it and make sure it's secure. All right, now that we've got that secured, we're gonna go ahead and plug in the other end and our intake air temperature sensor right here on the intake tube. All right, now we're gonna disconnect our intake air temperature sensor right here on our intake tube. So this one, you're just gonna push down on it, pull it right out like that. Once we've got it out, we're gonna take the other end from the Scorcher GT here, and we're gonna plug it in. So the female end is gonna clip in just like so. So this side will be on the bottom, this side will be up top where we just unclipped it. Again, this will only go in one way. You just push it in until it clicks, set that aside, and then we'll take the other end of it. There is a locking tab on this one, so we're gonna plug this in on this side facing me. Push it till it clicks, push the locking tab in, and then we've got everything plugged in here. Now that we have everything plugged in, it's time for a little bit of cable management. Now this is not my favorite thing to do, and your results may vary here. You can do whatever you want. Generally, you wanna keep this away from things that are gonna be super hot. Basically, you don't wanna run it right on top of this tube with the coolant running through it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the module and feed that under here. We're gonna set this aside for a moment now. And we can see we've got a little bit of leeway on this. So I'm gonna pull this long one out here, take one of the included zip ties, and I'm gonna feed this right underneath here, kind of get it taut. Just like that, take my snips, clip off the excess. Hopefully your snips work a little bit better than mine do on the first try. Pull that aside. We can maybe do one more over here. Actually, I think we're good like that. I wanna keep this, again, generally away from this coolant reservoir if I can. I'm gonna take one more though, and around this connector that we plugged in back here, around the map sensor, I'm gonna go around this bracket. Kind of pull that generally up and out of the way. Again, not exactly perfect, but again, we're keeping this off of the coolant reservoir here. So again, I'll take my snips and just clip off the excess here. Being careful not to clip any of the wires. All right, then next we're gonna go ahead and mount up our power module right over here. Okay, so on the back of our module here, we've got some Velcro. Now they include a few pieces in the kit. So I just put some back on there. I'm gonna peel the backing off of it. And again, you wanna mount this away from a place where it's gonna get super hot. So we're gonna keep it away from our coolant reservoir. And right here on this plate, I'm just gonna stick it in, get it nice and stuck. You wanna have access to the button here as well because this is the part that turns it on and off, which we'll show you in a moment once we get our battery connected up again. But now that that's mounted up and secure, just check all your cables, make sure you're happy with how that is going. Again, we'll kind of get that away here and we should be good to go. Last but not least, we're gonna reconnect our negative terminal on the battery. So I'll uncover that. 
get it seated nice. And then taking our 10 millimeter again, we're just gonna tighten this back down. All right, now we've gone ahead and turned the accessory power on to our Jeep. And as you can see, the light on the Scorcher module is on. So the default here is on. If you wanna turn it off, there is that button right here. Just press that button and you can turn it off. Now, AFE says that you can turn this on and off as the truck is running. I'd be a little cautious about doing that, but they say that you can. So if you wanna give it a shot, you certainly can. That's gonna wrap it up here for our review, install and dyno test of the AFE Scorcher GT power module fitting 3.6 liter powered 2020 and newer JT Gladiators, as well as 2012 and newer JK and JL Wranglers. Thanks so much for watching, and for all things Jeep, be sure to keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.